Hello and welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another quick bike ride, bike event update. As you can see from the title, uh, this is my second 600K this month. So let's, uh, let's do a little bit of history and then we'll tell you what, what went down. On May 4th, I did an 8K, 600K, so 8K for 8,000 meters and 600K for 373 miles or so. So that was May 4th, went into May 5th. So 373 miles with 26,000 plus feet of climbing, 32 hours total time, and I was pretty wrecked. And so there was another 600K on May 18th, so 14 days later. And I didn't talk about it on YouTube. I only talked about it with a few people because I did not know if I was going to be recovered enough. I signed up just in case. I mean, I didn't even prep my bike until Thursday, put aero bars on it. And there's a video about uh, the bike check after the event and I well we drove up Friday uh, Jess and I and so Saturday the 18th did another 600k and the goal was 24 hours and I completed that goal so 373 miles again with only 13,000 feet of climbing so half of the climbing of the previous 600k so I thought, well, this will be a easier. It's along the coast, you know, not as much climbing. Um, I expected a lot more head, uh, tailwinds, but in fact, we didn't have the tailwinds until further into the ride. But um, so there was, I think, 19 or so that might have started. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but right at the beginning, like within a mile into the event, there was a, some kerfuffle. And there was, you know, a big slowdown and I happened to be all the way to the left, just slowly getting onto a tandem's wheel that I passed me, got on the tandem and avoided that. And then a little while later, I realized there's actually someone else behind me. And so his name is Bradford. And the cool thing is Bradford and I both had a goal of 24 hours for this 600k and we ended up riding together for the entire event uh, and, and we don't know we, we didn't know each other until that day and um, it was really cool because he had a goal of 24 hours I had a goal of 24 hours we had never met and here we are on the road on this event and we're talking about the goal well I, I asked him and I said, hey, I'm going to roll through the night. And he said, yeah, okay, let's roll through the night. So um, we, at the overnight control, we changed kits. We had a little bit of food, and then we got back on the bike. The overnight control was at pretty close to 400K, like 380K, something like that, uh, about 225 miles into it. And... Um, and so we, we rode from Solana Beach, sorry, San Luis Obispo to um, San Juan Capistrano. Sorry, I haven't caught up on all my sleep yet. Today's Tuesday and the event happened Saturday into Sunday. Uh, Jess was incredibly awesome again. She um, sagged at the controls. Now this course was a lot slower than I expected it bike paths and stuff and of course I understand why the safety is a huge concern for a ride um, director or um, someone who creates routes and so through Los Angeles, uh, Santa Monica and places like that we're on a bike path that is very serpentine instead of straight and <laughs> and it's nighttime and so there's scooter, electric scooters, you know those little rent-a-bike things they're laying all over <laughs> the the bike path and we're dodging those and um, yeah and it you know pitch black so you're riding through there 
really slow, like 13 miles an hour for like a long time. And, uh, and other, other things like routing through town instead of, you know, bypassing town because you need to have access to stores and services. So the route makes sense. It's just harder to go fast on a route like that. So, um, kudos to the route planners for keeping us safe with the, some of the bypasses around town. Um, you know, it takes a lot of effort to put this stuff together. The overnight control had a spread of food, which was amazing. So uh, someone uh, had volunteered their home for people to come eat, sleep. We didn't sleep, but there's an option for that. You know, shower, take a nap, and then get back on the bike. So, you know, thank you to all the volunteers associated with this event, the organizers, the, the uh, supported the controls. I didn't need support from the controls, but other riders definitely needed, um, or it was welcomed to have supported these controls. Anytime you can minimize going into a store and getting in line on a busy Saturday to buy water and, and whatever, um, or food, um, you know, that's all welcomed, right? So, um, yeah, just... I'm just grateful to have Jess as my unbelievable uh, support person. The controls were pretty spread apart. I mean, I remember like 88 miles to this control and then 100 miles to the next control and then another 84 mile stretch. So, you know, Jess had a lot of time on her hands. So bless her patience for going uh, to these controls and meeting us there. So Brad ended up, basically, I sagged him out of my vehicle. Um, I had plenty of um, Rev Energy, of course, and I had plenty of uh, water and all that other stuff. So he ended up getting uh, support from, from uh, Jess and uh, a great, great ride with him. Very, very reasonable pace, no surging, no, you know going up and over rollers hard or, or you know, so it traded poles. A lot of times we rode side by side and just were talking the whole way, which was just amazing, you know, uh, to meet someone for the very first time and spend literally 24 hours with someone you've never met before and riding with them. And that's just the, the spirit of, of long distance and endurance cycling. So anyway, there's going to be a lot more footage that uh, Jess... Um, collected. Bradford took some pictures, so thank you, Bradford. I've, I've already uh, posted a few on a community post. So there's going to be more, and hopefully we can get Jess and I to sit down and debrief on this event. But, um, but yeah, two 600Ks within, what, 13 days of each other. <laughs> and I'm uh, pretty tired, so we'll see how my recovery continues. Hope, hopefully tomorrow, uh, Jess and I on Wednesday, it's her day off, we're going to try to get a active recovery ride out and about. And then, um, yeah, so that's that. So two 600Ks. Uh, these are not races, but I do pride myself in reducing the amount of time, total time, and then also the, the stop time. So we only had one hour and 17 minutes of total stop time over a 24-hour period, over a 373-mile or 600-kilometer, 13,000-foot uh, day. So I know that a lot of people go out for a century ride and will consume an hour um, at aid stations and stuff. And, and one hour 17, that also in, that includes, of course, all traffic lights and all that. And then when we got to the overnight control, uh, we switched our kits, and like I said, we ate a little something. So we were there probably 20 minutes at least. I'll have to look at the stop time <laughs> for that particular uh, mileage. But, you know, efficiency is the key. If you're doing these long, long events, staying on the bike, keeping the wheels rolling, and I talk about this all the time, but I just want to drive that point home for folks that these events are hard. And the longer you are off the bike, faffing about, the harder the event actually is for you because you're, you're associated with riding that bike 
for that many more hours and uh, and that starts to wear on you especially if you you sleep deprivation comes on so 100 milers 200 milers that kind of stuff you got to just get back on the bike as fast as possible get through the event and then at the end you can hang out at the finish line and talk for hours with people or uh, coffee at the end of your um, 50 miler or something so anyway Please like and subscribe. Please follow along. Hit the notification uh, bell so that you can you will know when I've posted another video. I am so tongue-tied. Apologies for that, but we will see you up the road.